Hey mamas, so this is my plan so far that I've kind of written out um, what I would like to do with the garden this year. This is going to be completely new, this whole thing right here. Um, and in the top corner, I don't know if you can see that, let me just move it. In the top corner here, I'm planning to um, dig out uh, this plot right here behind this apple tree and try to do it for all my big vines like my pumpkin, my sweet meat, and my vegetable marrow. We'll see how that goes. Um, my yard is plagued with Himalayan blackberries and also tons of just like invasive morning glory. So I have the hardest time trying to keep in ahead of that and there is blackberries that shoot up really close to the apple tree. There actually used to be a big maple tree there that um, got cut down, oh, probably about almost 20 years ago, I guess. And it started to grow back because there was the stump and then it just started to grow multi-trunk um, shoots all over the place and it just became um, such a hazard and it started to fall down with a good windstorm parts of it and so we just tore it down over the summer okay so these two raised garden beds have been here um, I did this when my son was what three years old my oldest so it's been almost 10 years I guess um, but here I'm going to do um, I have a little bit of a wired trellis up here on this end. So I'm going to do sugar snap peas because they did really well there last last summer. Um, and then I used to have bush beans here last summer but um, this time I'm going to use this space for three different kinds of carrots and I'm going to do succession sowing um, just so I have a good continuous bit of produce coming in but not all in one go because um, now that I'm a single mom, it's just, it's going to be a lot harder for me to process things like that all in one go. Uh, whereas before I used to have my husband to help me, uh, like mind the kids while I, while I did my, my canning and preserving. Um, in the center here, I'm going to focus on some tomatoes and some cherry tomatoes on this side. And what I did last summer is I did a row on the edging here of, uh, calendula. Um, and so I think I started those in, in, um, little pots and then I just transplanted them, uh, in here and they worked out really well. My tomatoes were great. They did fine. The only thing was, um, and I think I said this in a previous one is that I had a lot of slug, like slug pressure, uh, over the summer. So hopefully, I don't know, I can try to stay on top of that, um, a lot sooner. Um, over here... Um, I already have garlic planted in and they're starting to shoot up in this area. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to grow some green arrow peas over here on this trellis. Um, and I'm going to do some chickpeas, but that's probably not until um, the ground warms up a little bit more. And then this last little bit here, I'm going to try to do this pink popcorn around the last week of May. So I'm not really going to touch this garden too much. Um, and I haven't had any success with corn, not really anyways. So I'm going to try it, not for just straight on corn on the cob eating, but for, uh, to dry and cure for popcorn. We'll see how that goes. And, um, I'm just going along this edge here. I'm going to plant some, um, like bee friend mix and maybe some poppy seeds. We'll see. Um, just to keep some of that bug pressure um, to a minimum and of course get some good pollinators. Um, I really think it's great to have not only your your plants that you want for food like produce but also to plant some actual flowers not only for the the beauty of it but also to get those pollinators in and around your vegetables and getting things going and growing. Um, over here um, I bought these from Home Depot and they're going to come in and I can insert a picture of what they're going to look like. 
but they are roughly um, eight by three feet. And then the trellis goes, I think the trellis goes about eight, like six feet, I think, high on both sides. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get um, some uh, like one by twos and nail them to the top here so that they have sort of a continuation. So the trellis, um, so the vines and things can go all the way over to the other side and vice versa. Just so you have that extra vertical space. So this place, this part here is going to get some good southern light. But as you move further this way, the house is here. And so it kind of will block a bit. So I wanted to plant some, maybe some greens that don't need necessarily a lot of sun. Um, and actually maybe even prefer not to have all that sun on them all the time. So let's see if I could get it in here. Hopefully you're in focus. Um, so I have some spinach. Um, and some cabbage. I'm growing cabbage right now. I'm not doing anything to it. It's it's actually um, planted right over here near the garlic right now. Um, I haven't done anything to it because I just want to see how it does over the winter um, with me not watering it or doing any supplemental anything to it, just letting it go. And so far, so good. I mean, they're not huge by any means. They're, I don't know if um, I don't know if it's going to become a whole head of cabbage. Um, spinach in this first four. Cabbage here. We're not huge cabbage eaters. I'm going to eat mostly all the cabbage. <laughs> and then this front part here, I just wanted to focus on like zinnias and some wildflower mix. Um, and then here, oh, sorry my writing, <laughs> um, I'm going to do some sweet dumpling squash some nice little personalized squash going over and again i'm probably the only one who's going to be eating it maybe my my littlest one my nine month old because so far he's been eating everything i eat um but squ little squash and um baby blue hubbard squash over here and um some birdhouse gourds i'm gonna grow and then here at the front i was thinking just growing some sweet peas that might just nicely trail up up and over we'll see how that goes um on this side here we're gonna do little gem from the incredible seats out in nova scotia and i really really like them and my kids they love eating um caesar salad and if i can get more greens into them i'm going to take every every advantage i can Another one that I enjoyed was the Blushed Butter Oak, again from The Incredible Seeds. This one was really good. It was um, literally like it says, it was, <laughs> it was really buttery. <laughs> um, and then this one I loved growing. Uh, it's, I, I'm not going to say it in French because I suck at saying things in French, but it's devil ears. Um, and they literally do grow up like devil ears and I, I really enjoy that. But I, I love mixing devil ears with uh, blushed butter oak um, and the bib lettuce all together uh, in a nice mix. And sometimes I'll throw a little gem in there or I'll throw in some kale, which I'll talk about in a second here. So yeah, I have bib lettuce next. And then I have three different types of kale that I'm going to try. Um, I have the scarlet kate, kale, scarlet kale, sorry, and the rainbow kale growing right now again I just want to see how they do over winter uh, but my kids like kale chips so I'm going to do this rainbow kale oh my baby's awake I'm gonna do the rainbow kale and this Russian red let's see if I can find them okay so here's the Russian red this was a free packet from um, Baker Creek and and I'm gonna do this rainbow L lacinato I hope that's how you pronounce it lacinato kale and then this scarlet kale so this one's from Incredible Seeds and then this one's from West Coast Seeds so we're gonna try that um, 
and I'm not sure if I should grow something in here, like if I should grow the same types of squash here and let it trail the other way. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, this I want to grow somewhere, but I'm not sure where. If you guys know a good spot for Brussels sprouts. I've never grown them before, um, but I want to. I'm not sure where I should put these. But I like that I can do them at the um, at the end of spring. So that gives me a little bit of time. And I try to do as much direct sowing as possible because I just don't have the space um, or the right environment to do um, start my seeds indoors. Maybe one day I will, but I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's more feasible for me to maybe do to uh, invest in a good greenhouse and and do my seedlings in there. And then in the grow bags that I'll have up on my deck, I'm going to do strawberries because they did they did really well there last summer. Basil, again, did really well. Okra, potatoes, cilantro, rosemary. You know, there was no slug pressure, so that was great. The okra I tried on the north-facing side of my house, which was, which I gets morning light and it gets afternoon light, but a break in between. <laughs> And I don't think my ochre like that. They, I think they just want a ton of heat, ton of sun. So the deck is going to get all southern sun all day long. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. Cilantro. Um, I said in grow bags, but I think I'm going to put that in the north face of my house. And that's a good thing about grow bags is they're portable. So I'm going to do that. Um on the north facing side of the house where it gets a break during the day. Yes, baby. Um, another thing I ordered, which will hopefully come in, I think in May, April, May, is uh, some lemon citrus trees. So stay tuned for that. I, I, it'll be interesting to see how I can grow that here in Vancouver. It, it's, we get pretty good summers, but it's short lived. <laughs> And so, we'll see. Grow bags, I think, are the way to go because I'm going to have to bring it in and out of every year. And keep that thing alive, hopefully. <laughs> um, so, on the north-facing side of the house here. So, this is our, our front door and our walkway and a little path going to our driveway where our car is. So, I have um, five uh, containers here which I usually, which I, oops, sorry, ah, baby, baby's kicking it, don't kick it, baby. So I have five, uh, five containers here that I have, um, perennials right now, doing pretty well over the fall and winter, hookahs and, uh, different grass, angel hair grass, and some pansies, and a couple other things, but, um, for the most part, I want to try to keep the grass and the hookra and then maybe just switch out um, the other things over the summer. And over here I have three terracotta pots and they're full of different types of bulbs from tulips to crocuses to alliums and um, I think that's, oh, and um, camas bulbs as well. Um, I have salvias that I put in over the fall, which hopefully are doing good. This one here I hope will come back. Someone came along when I wasn't home, I guess, and snapped it, um, snapped it at the base, and I'm super sad about that. And I will tell that story um, maybe at my next Mama Confession. I'll, ex I'll tell the story about these three salvias and why they mean so much to me. I'm planning to grow some wildflower mix through here. There's a tree trunk <laughs> that we cut down on um, this uh, Christmas tree. So I'll tell that story about my husband uh, wanting a Christmas, wanting to keep the Christmas tree, and they planted it. But <laughs> that got cut down because it was not doing so good. And over here at the top corner, I'll just show you this down. Um, I want to grow something that will give year-round interest. Something like uh, maybe a butterfly bush or a burning bush or magnolia tree. Um, we'll see. 
and then as we get closer to the house it's it gets absolute shade like barely any light touches this area here so uh, I thought that would be a good spot for hostas so I ordered <clears throat> three different types of hostas um, and I'm, I'm excited to put those in and see how they do I know it's gonna look a little sparse until they really fill out in like a year or two but I'm, I'm okay with that <laughs> over here on the other side of the pathway um, there's this ugly sump pump it looks like a culvert with a lid and I'll insert a picture of it and I have to figure out what to do to cover that up because I don't like it if you guys have any ideas feel free to let me know I'm thinking maybe some pots um, because it has to be accessible somehow but it's such an eyesore so I don't know if I can grow things around it or if I could put pots maybe on top um, but help me out here if you have any ideas that'd be great beside it is um, some roses that I have helped maintain for my mother-in-law uh, I think these roses are probably almost 40 years old at this point and I've been helping maintain them for um, 18 years so yeah I, it's very important to me to keep that going another thing that I did is I ordered for the first time some David Austin roses so um, I'm not exactly sure which ones I'm going to put in but I bought Carding Mill, Lark Ascending and Jude the Obscure so they're cream, apricot and like a peach color so the, this rose is, is red so I'm not sure they might clash but I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping I can add things here and there to to help bridge the color gap some wildflower mix again I'm planning to so that there's a bit of a swath continuation through here um, I have blueberries and I'm planning to buy a couple of more to fill it out it took a few years for those blueberries to really bear some good amount of fruit and now that they have um, and these raspberries have just <laughs> exploded in this area I feel like I need to flush it out with some extra blueberries here um, I have this native plant section that I started last summer and they were doing really well unfortunately I had someone from the community um, out of the goodness of their heart they came and they started mowing and weed whacking and unfortunately they weed whacked all of, all of this here and so I'm hoping it comes back fingers crossed um, and then over here I bought some peonies um, and I planted them and I can't for the life of me remember which ones they are but I will look them up and I will insert pictures but oh um, I forgot to say this part here is a little fenced diamond cage that I made but I want to get some straight sticks to or straight uh, bamboo poles maybe to anchor them a bit better from the wind um, and I'm going to plant some soybeans here because my kids love edamame another thing I kind of want to grow over here along my driveway here I want to grow this salvia mix this Cleopatra mix from Baker Creek just I think anything and everything that will bring the pollinators, the butterflies, the, the hummingbirds and the bees, I'm all for it. <clears throat> so these are my gardening plans for now. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy Lemonade Mamas! Bye!